Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I wanted to show you how you can create a brand new supply chain using the SEM Globe simulator. Now, once you're in the account management tab, you can see different supply chains that you have created or have or that you have imported from the library that we have. And these are the different save states that are associated with these supply chains. So to create a new supply chain, we're going to hit the action button that says create a new supply chain and you'll have to give it a name. And for this one, I'm going to give it a name of demo test. I've already been playing around with a bunch of different supply chains. So this one isn't taken and I'm going to create it. Once I create, I'm here in the actual app and it's split up into a couple of different sections. On the FN side, you'll have the map and on the right hand side, you'll have the different supply chain entities. Now the four different ones that we're going to work with are products, facilities, vehicles, and routes. And these exist for every single supply chain, no matter how complex or how simple they may be. So the first thing we're doing is going to create a product for our supply chain. And if I hover over these, the products section, I can click on it and then I'm going to click on new entity. Now, um, this is going to, um, prompt a pop-up box, which where you can, um, edit the information about your product. So for this product, we're going to add, uh, candy. Now this product is not a single bag of candy. It's going to be a case of, candies, um, say about a hundred bags or 200 bags each. So we're going to configure this and that's how we're going to do this. So the price, we're just going to give it a price of about, um, $10. And then the weight of this case is going to be, let's say 10 kilograms. And we're just, uh, making up some just arbitrary numbers and it's going to take up a 0.4 cubic meters. We're going to click on update. And there we have it. There's our first product. If we click on it, we can edit the information of that product. Cool. So now that we've created a product, we can now create a facility. So it's going to be much the same process for each of these entities. So I'm just going to create a new facility and I'm going to give it a name. Let's give this one, uh, actually let's give this one candy factory. Let's start at the beginning. So, um, I'm going to give it a name. And then if I select the type, you can see the different types of entities that we have. But in this case, I'm just going to give it a type of factory. And there's a bunch of different information that you can play around with. And you can see that you can play around with the storage capacity, the operating costs, rent costs, and then how much carbon um, the factory outputs per day. That's how intricate um, this simulation can get. And then obviously, we're going to add a product to this specific factory. So I'm going to click on product and um, you can see that there is a couple different settings, including demand per day and production per day. This is a factory. So we're going to be producing um, items. We're going to be producing the candy. Um, you can also have demand per day because like in real world situations, factories can also have demand. Say they have demand for a certain item that is used to produce the candy, then that's how it would work. And then you obviously have some quantity on hand. So I'm just going to change to make it a lot simpler, the production per day to be about a hundred cases of, of candy. And I'm going to add it and then cool. Perfect. We have the information here and now. Um, we can save, but now we have to, um, before we say, we have to please put a, fa a facility on the map. We have to place a facility on the map. So I'm going to click on okay. And let's just put it somewhere in the middle of Columbus right here. And once we place a, a facility on the map, we can, we can further, um, we can make this as real as possible by accessing the satellite view or maybe um, terrain or whatever, the easiest way, um, to kind of, um, get a good sense of where exactly it is that you're placing. So I'm going to zoom and I'm going to head, um, to where my candy factory is. I'm going to zoom in all the way. Let me just see if I can locate it. And then now that we are here, you can see that there's, there are a bunch of buildings. Now say this one, say this is a spot that we actually rented our can our, our space for the candy factory. I can just drag it and I can drop it that way. When we have our simulations running, the data can be as accurate as possible. 
as possible. And you want to do this for obviously all of your facilities. So once I've placed it, I can click on save. And now we have the candy factory. Um, cool. So I'm going to zoom out again. And now we're going to need a candy store. Let's just say um, we're going to just create a new one just like we would regularly. And I'm going to create the store. The type is going to be a store. And then I have a max storage capacity. Let's just say of around a thousand just for the sake daily operating cost is going to say the same daily rent cost and the carbon output um, would stay the same now um, for this i can add um, create store i just realized it's actually going to be called candy store <laughs> that happens on occasion when you're making these videos um, and so i'm going to add a product now and since it's a store i'm going to have some demand and then i have some quantity on hand so let's just say I want my demand to be 70 per day, sure, and my quantity on hand, let's put, uh, let's just say 500 or so. I can add this, and then I can save the candy store. But again, I have to place it somewhere. Um, and I don't know where I'm going to place it. Let's just say I want to place it all the way somewhere over here. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And again, if I wanted to get very accurate, I can zoom in and I can place the store wherever I see fit. But this is just for illustration purposes. So I'm just going to save this. And then there is a store. Perfect. Now we're going to move on to the next uh, entity, which is the vehicles. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the candy factory because that's where the vehicle is going to originate from. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to select vehicles. I'm going to add a new vehicle. And again, we can play around with all these settings. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to give it the name of truck one and the tights, obviously not an airplane. I'm just going to say, Hey, this is going to be a small truck. Sure. We can play around and add it as a medium or a large truck. And then you can have different options here. Um, if it were, if you would need a train, we have train options, ship airplanes. Um, but for the most part, we're just going to use trucks in this scenario. It works the exact same method as if you were to use other methods of transportations, other vehicles. So I want to select truck small and I'm going to leave this all pretty much the same. The one thing I want to remind everyone is the delay between departure setting. So uh, when it gets back to its destination, um, when how long before it takes off again. So I want it to run um, to deliver once a day. Let's say I'm just going to add a 24 hour window. If I want it to be twice a day, I'm going to cut this in half to 12 hours. But for the sake of this, I'm just, I'm just going to add it um, once a day. I'm going to update it. And now that I have my truck, I can configure the route. Select the truck. I'm going to add the route. And that's going to be a new route. And then let me just mess around with this. The name is going to be Candy Factory to Store. And then the available stops um, this is originating in the Candy Factory. So I am going to add Candy Store and then I'm going to add Stop to Route. And it's going to give you automatically a route based on um, the input that you have given. And it's going to do this automatically. So um, I'm going to update this. And you'll see that um, the route has been populated, which is kind of cool. This uses real world data from the Google Maps. So um, pretty much this is your supply chain. You have just created um, the logistics of this um, hypothetical candy factory to the store. We've we've manufactured some items. We've shipped them. We've created vehicles, routes and the, and the different um, entities that make up. Uh, a supply chain. Obviously, this can get a lot more complex, but um, this is in essence how you can create a supply chain. And once this has been created, you can do many different things like run the simulation, analyze the data, and then go back and forth to perfect your supply chain. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.